Hey guys, I'm Robert from Master Guitar Academy. In this video, I'm going to answer a question from Richard. He asked me about the chromatic scale and how to use it. So I'll show you how I use it. I'll give you actually three different approaches. But first of all, what is the chromatic scale? Well, in my view, it's simply all the notes that you have available, one after the other. So we could, of course, play it on the uh, guitar this way, from open string to the 12th fret. That's the chromatic scale. Now, you don't have to use all 12 notes all the time. You can still use the chromatic scale by just using some notes from it. So it's very common to use chromatic, uh, the chromatic scale as a way to tie together different cool notes in a lick or in a scale. So let me show you up close on the fretboard a few ideas of how I use the chromatic scale in blues. So one way to use the chromatic scale when you're playing blues licks is to start on a chord tone and then you go to another chord tone and you use all the notes in between, thereby playing part of the chromatic scale. Let me give you an example. We're playing over a blues of some kind in E. We have an E7 chord probably. So we can go from the minor third to the fifth using all the notes in between. So if we do that from here on the G string on the 12th fret, and if I play all the notes on, the, on this string, it would look like this. So minor third, major third, uh, the fourth, the flat five, and the perfect fifth. So we have five notes now. Now the problem with this is, of course, the fingering isn't very nice. We have to do a shift somewhere. So you could do a shift after you play the first note. Or you could do it when you, after you play the second last one. So. But I think both aren't really nice because you have to do a lot of work with four fingers. So let me show you another way that I like to play it. I play like this. It makes it easier to play faster stuff. So I'm playing three notes on the G string. And now I switch to the B string. So I play the, the flat five up here. And the fifth, the perfect fifth here. So three notes on this string and two notes on this string. So then I can use hammer-ons and pull-offs. So let's play from the minor third up to the fifth and back chromatically using two strings. So I'm picking the first two and do a hammer-on on the third. I switch to the B string. I pick the next two but from the perfect fifth, I do a pull off down to the flat five. So. Switch to G string and pick the next two and do a pull off. So now we have, we play the same thing as. But it's way easier, I think, to play it this way. The fewer fingers you have per string, in general, the easier it is to play things, at least for me. So I like to use three or two notes per string if I can, and I try to avoid four notes because it's more difficult, you know? It's just more to keep track of. So let's make a cool lick out of this now. So we can do this. Sounds awesome. And it works for the fourth chord too, for example. You can really hear the chord in that lick, right? And then 
you take it from there. So let's examine what I play there. I play... So far it's the same as just the chromatic up and down from the third to the fifth and backwards. But here... I'm just ending it with going from the, the fourth to the minor third to a hammer on to the major third and ending it on the root note up on the E string here. So we're going from G string to E string. So one more time. And if you want to pick every note, that's fine. It's just I like to use hammer-ons and pull-offs to make my playing more smooth and controlled. If I play, uh, if I use the pick on every note, it sounds just a little different. But for my technique, it's easier to go. So that's one lick. Now, another way we can use the uh, the chromatic scale is to just use uh, chromatic passing tones. So let's say we play a lick like this. Which sounds kind of jazzy. And it's also a chord tone lick. This is uh, a lick that fits over the four chords, so in this case an A7 or A13. Uh, so you can hear that in there. So what I'm doing here is I'm I'm playing which are part of the uh, well, we can look at it as the A Mixolydian mode. That's usually what I use over the four chord. That's the mode that fits dominant seven chords. But I'm using chromatic passing tones here. Right, going from this note to this note, I'm using a note in between that does not belong to the scale. So. If we look at it from an interval perspective, the note I'm starting on is the second for A. Then I go up to the fourth. And then I go up to the sixth. And then I play a note that doesn't belong in the scale, which is the uh, sharp five or the flat six, minor six, however you want to look at it. But I'm ending on, well, this part of the lick comes down here on the on the perfect fifth, so it sounds cool. Then I go back to the fourth, down to the second, and play now chromatically. Two, so this is second, minor third, and major third. So this note does not belong in the scale, but it sounds cool when you use it in between these two. Right, so we have so far, Then I go up to the fifth again, and then jump back to the root note now on the G string and play chromatically, ending on the minor seventh, which is a strong chord tone for an A7 chord or A dominant chord, right? So I actually have a major seventh in there, but which doesn't belong in the scale, but it's an example of how you can view one usage of the chromatic scale by using uh, using it as just a part of it as passing tones. You can do that any time. Right. So let's play that lick one more time. Those are the notes, so you want to play it with a swingy feel. So 
something like that. I think it sounds sweet with the four chord. So it's uh, probably a bit more uh, of a jazzy sounding lick, but it's cool to throw those things into the blues once in a while. And it gets you away from that pentatonic stuff. Now lastly, a third way that you can use the chromatic scale is to just play it, you know, note after note until you find a cool tone. It's like searching for the next chord tone. Sometimes that works really well. Like, let me see if I can... If we're in E7 again, and I play... Maybe that wasn't a good example, but I'm kind of searching for the next cool tone to to get into. Maybe the maybe I'm ending my search when the fourth chord comes in. You know, like you know, I just kept going. I could I could go longer than that. That's a cool approach sometimes when you, you're not sure what you want to do, just keep going. Oh, big bend there at the end. But you hear hopefully what I'm talking about. You keep going and eventually you, you end up automatically on a cool note because you're, you have all the 12 notes available. So you just have to stop at one that you think sounds great for the situation at hand, so to speak. All right, I hope you got something out of that. Now, I just want to mention to you that uh, on my website, Master Guitar Academy, I have lots of DVDs and premium downloads if you want to learn more. I also have a membership system where if you join, you can instantly access hundreds of lessons and they all come with backend tracks and uh, Guitar Pro and Tab and all sorts of goodies along with it. So. All right, I'll see you next time.